Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great start to your day. It's an overcast day in Houston. Actually, it has a flash flood. Watch out. Uh, I don't think uh, it's going to get that bad on my side, but a couple of places are looking for some severe thunderstorms. It's been a pretty good run of good sunny days, so not going to complain about it. Uh, I'm going to try to get what I need to get done and get back in. Uh, look, I was having a conversation last night, a pretty in-depth conversation about uh, the status or state of our people here in America. And it's amazing to me how little energy, effort, focus, and activity we put into the solving of our problems and we discussed um, a whole conundrum of problems but one of the things that sort of stuck out is obviously something that's a passion of mine this entire thing has been a passion it's been a driving passion for uh, years I'm not new to this I'm not new to uh, pushing and fighting I'm not new to the research I'm not new to gaining an advancing understanding of the enigmas that we face. This is who I have been. And in addition to what I do in my business is to support my family. This has been a passion for me and it will continue to be so. But uh, what do you do when someone's targeting your child? You know, when you feel like someone is purposely going after your child, when you feel someone is purposely attacking your, your, your child, your children, uh, what type of action do you take? Now, I know on a superficial surface level, we go hard in the paint for our kids. We'll catch a case for our kids. If somebody say something to our kids, that teacher say something wrong to our kids, somebody down the street mess with our kids, we're down there in a heartbeat. We go hard in the paint. But see, the problem is that's not the greatest threat to our children. What Miss Johnson said to uh, uh, little David ain't the worst thing that's going to happen to little David. Little David has an X on his back from the moment he walks into a public educational system. He is more likely, significantly more likely, disproportionately more likely to be uh, pushed towards special education, be diagnosed or assigned some label like ADHD, oppos oppositional defined disorder, um, and a number of other things that they tend to aim at our boys, especially things that uh, you can use drugs, especially psycho psychotropic drugs like the ones that are used uh, to control uh, behaviors like ADHD, uh, oppositional defiance disorder, things that they've been riddling, uh, Vyvanse, Concerta, Adderall. All of these are Schedule II drugs, psychotropic drugs, drugs that have very little uh, medicinal use, very little use in the medical industry, but it's used in these particular instances. Um, and they are as early as five years old being diagnosed and prescribed these medications that target it. These medications are Schedule II drugs for a couple of reasons. Number one, they have very little medicinal use. They have very little use in the medical field. Um, and number two, they're highly addictive. That means that when you put your children on these drugs, they will become addicted to them. Uh, and the whole thing is a lot of these children are being misdiagnosed. And I wrote about that in The Miseducation of Black Youth America. And I definitely wrote even more deeply about it in Academic Apartheid, uh, which was my 24th book. The thing is, we don't have the same vigor in developing methods, mechanisms, and agendas to help us deal with specifically this particular uh, type of aggression. And it's not just our boys, it's our girls. Our girls are being targeted uh, through social media heavily. There's a couple of studies that were done uh, a couple of years ago. And it showed that Instagram is extremely dangerous for developing minds of young girls uh, in their uh, preteen and teen years. And yet, 
nothing's being done about it. Um, and we are not advancing any type of movement. We're not countering it in any type of way. We're not creating programs. And, and we had this talk, you know, and I was talking to actually uh, at the cigar shop yesterday, I was talking to the guys about the fact that uh, when you have children and they can be as creative as they can and you want to say, you want to say, okay, they need phones in this day and age. I need to know and be able to get in contact with you. Okay, I get that. But what you got to understand is when you handle them a phone, you're not handing them a phone. You are handing them a computer. You're handing them complete access to everything out there. And I, like I was telling them, um, you can go to hell and back putting blocks and and mechanisms on these phones. These kids are experts at getting around it. Trust me, I know. And and you're doing all this and you're trying to manage it. You're trying to control what they can see, what they can't see uh, and all that. And you do the best you can from that, Karina. So then when you realize that there's just going to be certain things, if I'm going to let her have or let him have this device and there are just certain things that they're going to be able to get to, what do I do? Then I need to invest more energy and effort and spending more time with them so that I can make sure that the values that I hold and the principles I hold and the, the ability and power I have to give them a sense of identity, a sense of self-worth, a sense of, sense of value, then I need to spend more time with them. I also need to have operations within the home that will counter the negative information that they're getting in the street. If there's no counter, there's no rebuff. You, you, what you see a lot with kids today, and I say kids, I mean anybody under 25, what you see a lot with kids today is them being totally mind blown and flabbergasted when they're held accountable for something because the social, the social norm now is they're entitled. They shouldn't have to do anything they don't want to do. Why are you asking me this? Why I have to tell you, oh my God, you're too nosy. No, I'm your parent. There's no such thing as being nosy as a parent. I have a right to know. My job is to protect you. My job isn't to be your friend. My job isn't to get along with you. My job is to protect you. Not would I like to get along with you in the process? Would I like to build a strong bonded relationship? Absolutely, I'm gonna work hard at it. I'm not trying to antagonize you, not trying to be a butthole, but my first responsibility is to protect. I can't sit up and let that pass because I don't wanna upset you, because I don't wanna get you mad at me, because you don't wanna follow rules. I, I, I'm gonna ease back, man. You know, I see a lot of parents just trying to get through the whole parenting experience because parenting has become that challenging. Why? Because we've given the kids far too much room to move around. And then there are situations where, again, they are being targeted. This isn't isolated incidents. This isn't a situation where everybody's getting the same thing. Our children are being targeted and we are not working to do anything about it. Uh, we have problems. Uh, a big part of, and you've heard me harp on this, and I will continue to harp on it because it's real. And me sitting back and saying, okay, I'm beating a dead horse and, and sitting back doesn't stop it. I'm going to harp on it until it either changes or I die because it's that important. We are not socializing our children. We're not creating programs that pro uh, proficiently uh, prepare them to enter into society, prepare them to understand who they are. Socialization is the, the first element of socialization is personal identity. Who am I? How do I fit into this world? The development of the self-image. What can I do? What am I capable of? Self-image is going to impact self-esteem, self-confidence, how I look for you in the world. Am I going to buy into notions that I'm not beautiful? Am I going to buy into notions, uh, social norms and standards and, 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 and constructs that say I'm not intelligent, I'm not smart, uh, I'm not attractive because I don't look like a certain type of person, uh, whatever that may be in whatever situation, or do I know enough about myself to feel good about myself and strongly about who I am to walk out into a world and be boldly who I am and do it in such a way that I make an imprint in this world, I'm successful and I'm moving forward. That's the responsibility of, of us for our children. Now, here's the problem with the socialization thing is a great part of socialization for males and females is the man. And the man is missing in so many different ways. This isn't here, I'm not here to take shot at men. I'm here to sit up and make, make a point. 1.5 million men unaccounted for. 
then another large part of the population erroneously present. What do I mean by that? They're actually setting bad examples. They are actually damaging our children with their behaviors, with their inconsistency, with their violence, and all of these things. And then we got those of us who are trying our best to do it right, trying our best to love, trying our best to do it, and we're just trying to get through with our own. So we're not even thinking about going out there and trying to help nobody else and do nothing for anybody else. Man, it's just hell being a dad at home. I'm not trying. And so what happens is we do that. And, and you know, that's not me personally. I'm out being, I'm farthing, it, it seems like every damn body. And I would rather give my all to lifting people and empowering them and making them feel just a little bit better about themselves and giving them a sense of hope and a sense of purpose and a sense of identity than to sit up and be selfishly inclined into something that in and of itself will do well for my children to a certain extent. But if I send them out into a world where even the people who look like them hate them because we're not properly socializing them, I'm, am I really helping them? I'm preparing them, but I'm sending them into a world that I could actually make better. And so, what am I getting at? I'm saying we've got to do better on a number of fronts. We got to do better in the home. We got to do better in being engaged. Yeah, if somebody wants to physically harm your child or somebody goes directly at your child, yeah, you're ready to go get them. But what about these subtle ways our children are being targeted that have far reaching consequences, far more detrimental to them than somebody calling them out of their name or somebody pushing them or something like that? We are going to have to do better. We're going to have to look at the fact that, okay, if 1.5 million men are missing, how are we accounting for that? Because they play a major role in socialization, not just for boys, for girls too. There's a difference in the father telling the daughter she's beautiful than the mother. Do you realize that? Do you understand that? So then in essence, how do, how do we account for the fact that that, that self-esteem that the father has the capacity to put in. Now, don't get me wrong. Mom saying it is important as well. But when dad says it, it's different. It's different when dad uh, lifts her, when dad protects her. It's also different when she sees dad loving on mom and protecting her. And hey, for you guys that are not together again, it still matters. It even matters more. It is a powerful thing when they can sit up and say, okay, you guys didn't make it, you didn't make it, but I'm looking at how he treats you, even in the fact that, even when you, you know, you didn't make it, that is awesome. And it, it shows how we're supposed to handle each other. Sometimes, you know, we, we don't make it. Um, I think we give up too easy, but that's just me. Um, I believe in, if it's not abusive, if, it's it's not I mean literally sucking the life out of you they're just making you feel miserable they're doing everything opposite of what you're doing and you can't see a way to but see most people don't want to work no most people don't want to build most people want to inherit that life they want with someone they want to inherit it they want it the way they want it when it gets it and they have little patience with it nobody's building something it's work having anything in life worth having it's work it's never just as easy as fine. and then those people who inherit great things tend to uh blow them tend to squander them why because they did not have to uh do everything that they need to do what I'm challenging people to do is we need to have programs uh, like the programs we have, like the programs I've seen other people uh, have in mental health, in, 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 in uh, female etiquette, in socialization for male and female, rite of passages. Uh, like Black Man Lead, uh, like what Marion does with, with, with Ghetto's Restor Restoring Daughters. We need to support people who are actually going to be in front of our children to try to build them. We need to get behind programs. Uh, I've been telling you this forever, and I'm going to consistently tell you this until something changes or until I die. We can't sit around and let our children be targeted and think we're really actually going to bat for them. The Jordans you bought them mean absolutely nothing when they're being herded to prison. The Jordan, uh, you know, the beautiful, you know, iPhone 14, you just got her. Is nothing going to be nothing if she sits up and she spends all her time on Instagram learning everything that she shouldn't be doing to do. 
what are we filling their time with? How are we engaging them? How much energy and effort are we putting into being a positive part of their lives and putting them in situations to win? We need to be developing our own educational system, period, point blank. Um, I could talk about this for a, long, a lot, but I've got to get in, get out, and get back and actually get to work. But look, show some love, show some support for the work we do. Find other organizations that you want to show love with or you want to work with. But we have been asking. We have a rite of passage in Black Man Lead that has proven results. Reduction in uh, proclivity for violence, reduction in dropout rate, which means reduction in incarceration. Uh, uh, more family oriented, meaning they're more likely to be able to build and sustain a family so much more. And it's proven over time. Socialization is a powerful tool and we're missing on that. Show some love and support. Go into the description box, click the link and give. You can either give by way of the link or you can give by way of the organization's cash app account. However you give, give. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.